Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Ryan Rice. On this episode, you already know what we're going to cover. It's in the title, so let's get after it. Before we go through the full walkthrough, I just want to show you before I mount the Yakima box. I had Denny give me the provisions to, for the Yakima box itself. And just a little detail here, you can see this little square cutout, which is smooth. There's no burrs on it. It's nice and smoothed out. This access port is to give me access to the wiring inside this trailer in case I want to add lights to the Yakima box at a later date. Just little details like that make On The Water Innovations a step above everyone else. He also included the stainless steel hardware to mount the box itself. I mean, who else does that? One thing I'm going to do before I mount the Yakima box is I did put down self-stick foam padding just to give it some protection so the plastic's not rubbing right against the metal here on the trailer you know give a little bit of cushion to the box itself and also protect the trailer over you know long term uh you know vibration and scratching and hopefully protect the paint as well but this will just give us a little bit of a cushion for the box itself and i suggest doing this just for the simple fact of just doing the right thing you know taking that extra step it doesn't cost much you can pick it up at your local box store if there is any wind in the background, I apologize, but I want to shoot this outside so you have a good quality light while I shoot this video. You know, being outside, it's sunny. It's been raining for the past, whew, can't tell you how many days. So we're actually enjoying being out in the sun, getting some vitamin D. But we're just going to kind of do a, a brief walk around here real quick of the On The Water Innovations trailer. You can see I went all black. And the reason why I went all black is because it will go with any vehicle I had. The way I change vehicles, I figure black is the best color, and also the black holds up the best because you can, you know, if you scratch it, or whatever, it's easy to match the color with some spray paint or whatever. I mean, these these trailers are powder coated, but I mean, just as far as a touch up and try to keep the rust from, you know, uh, starting, you could always just give it a quick touch up with some good quality spray paint, or you could take it to a powder coat locally, and they could always do some touch up as well. But black's just an easy color to maintain and also it's more of a durable finish according to on the water you know they make you can do any color you want but according to on the water the black textured powder coat is the most durable so let's start from the front and we'll go through everything in detail so denny actually puts a coupler pin he had it tethered off to the trailer but with my ocd i actually cut the tether off this way I could padlock it. I feel more secure when I have a padlock on my trailer. It's just one of my things. Here he has chains. You know, you can do chains without <clears throat> without these, you know, catches basically right here to keep them on your thing. They make just hooks. But you can see he takes the extra effort. Sources, you know, ones with the uh, the spring holder thingies. I don't even know what they're called. We're just going to call them spring holder thingies. And he actually puts a hook up front in the trailer here to actually store them while you don't have it hooked up to your truck. You can option for a 7-pin or a 4-way flat. I went with the 7-pin because I like 7-pins. I think they're more of a durable because a lot of times the 7-pins comes with this rubber cord. And you can see he actually uses a wiring box to make all his connections. I'm sure even with the 4-way flat, he probably uses a better quality uh, wiring harness. But, you know, with the 7-pin here, it gives you the option to have constant power to the trailer. A fold up boat trailer jack on this. And I actually optioned for the winch as well. And another thing is the winch is good for, you know, the, the heavy Hobie PA to be able to get it up on the trailer. And it's also, to me, in my opinion, another safety uh, feature when you have your uh, kayak on the trailer that you can wrap this around the front handle. And it's just another point of attachment in case anything comes loose back here. And you can see he actually has a rubber boot right here that's adjustable that will take the bow of your kayak just for protection. I mean, just having that, you know, that rubber boot is actually a great detail. The winch is great quality. It, you know, it does forward and reverse. It's just a, you know, good setup here. He bolts it down. He uses, you know, he doesn't weld it. He actually bolts it here in case you have to replace this. You can always take the bolts out and change your winch if needed. But all this stuff here is all welded. And he also here at the bottom has bolts as well for your adjustment. If you need to move this around or make any adjustments depending on your kayak. Also puts a hook to hold your winch as well welded onto the uh, whole setup he has here. I think it's a great, great just design. You know, this is where the quality comes in for the trailer itself and just the extra thoughts that he puts into this overall. You know, having the wiring compartment here is also a great option. It comes, you know, standard. You could always just change your cord or your four-way flat by just coming in here. There's some screw terminals in here. You undo the terminals and replace his cord if you ever need to. 
I went with the optional black aluminum rims. It's an upgrade, but I just think, you know, aluminum rims are hold out longer over steel. You know, steel's gonna rust, you know, especially when you go into the water all the time. So that's why I went with the aluminum. And I don't like the two-tone color. I went with the black. Everything being black, it just looks nice. You know, the tires themselves, he even uses radio tires, which are rated for 80 miles per hour. So they're, you know, rated for us who want to get to that fishing spot really fast. You don't have to worry about a blowout on the highway. He knows that, so he picked a better quality tire. Then he prepped for me to have two rod tubes. Now I have a video on how I did this rod tube and how I finished it, but he can do it for you as well. But you know, with me, I like to do a lot of things myself. So he did the actual prep for the eight inch tubes and I had him set up for two eight inch tubes here. I'm gonna probably add another tube down the line, but for right now, a single tube works because I have the Yakima box. Right here, we have the two switches. One switch is for the rigging lights and one switch is for the undercarriage lights. I went with the red color, which I'll show you guys some night video of the undercarriage lights and the rigging lights when it gets dark later today. Even just a switch location, you know, he has all the wiring hidden inside the actual tubing of the trailer. And just how he comes up with how he did these switches, you know, being recessed and being right here, I think it's very, very cool. I think he's changed his setup over the, you know, with the switches over time. But he's definitely improving as he's, you know, been doing this longer. And I really love this just simple push button switches. Even the fenders. The fenders, they are very hard plastic. Even though they're plastic, they are still rated for 300 pounds. They're not those cheap old plastic ones you get. You have a nice step area right here. And you actually have a step area right here on top. And I'm 250 and even in the middle here, I stepped on it before I put the rod tube on just to check. And it's very sturdy. And obviously you're, you're always gonna wanna step right here you know, if you need to over the top, but the top will hold you. I'm just saying I would prefer, and I'm sure even the manufacturer would prefer if you stepped right here because he has the metal, you know, support underneath this. This is just around the tire itself, but it's still, it's such a thick plastic that it, hold, it held me when I went to go test it. Then he pretty much does the rod tubes if you have him do them the same way I did. You know, you can do different paint uh, color schemes and all that stuff. But he still uses the, you know, he does the rivets on the end so you can't just unscrew them and take the covers off to get to your rod. I think I actually picked the same cover that he actually uses for his rod tubes, which is a decent aluminum cover. Down here at the bunks, yeah, I went with the option carpeted bunks. You can get them uncarpeted or put carpet on them. I decided to go, you know, put carpet on them just to give a little bit of protection because I've already scratched my cotton up so much already I want to start protecting it at this point and when I got there this morning uh, he says hey Ryan guess what he's like I put carpet on top of your area right here as well so when you throw your other kayak up there you're gonna have protection and that's another reason why I did the uprights I wanted to be able to have the ability to take out you know our heroes on the water basically and take out our first responders that's why I went with the upright option and I also wanted the you know the rod box and the tube itself you know with the rod box when I had when I did the trailer build with uh, Denny I made sure that he gave me preparation for the rod box and you can see he does a nice perfectly sized support for this Yakima rod box. So as far as the bunks, you can see they are totally adjustable for any kayak that's on the market today, which is a great feature. You're just not locked into a trailer that's only made to handle so many kayaks. You could probably even take the back and move it over and keep the front in a little bit if you have a little bit of a taper in your kayak. But this is set up right now for my kayak for the Hobie PA 14. All the lighting is LED submersible lights sealed. And even his license plate bracket is metal. It's not plastic, so once you put your plate on there, it's not going to break off, you know, when you're going down the highway. The tie-offs themselves are, I got the, you know, opted for these. They are able to come across, hook on here, and then you just do a couple little clicks, and that's it. You do not have to tighten your kayak down very hard at all with these. And this is a nice feature to get. Once again, they're bolted on, so if you ever have a problem with these, you could unbolt it and replace them. If you don't use the ratchet straps, you can see he has a hook point here, and obviously he has this hook point here. One other thing I did modify when I brought the trailer home is that these come with, you know, rubber-coated hooks. And once again, with my OCD, I actually changed them out for stainless steel carabiners just in case this mechanism ever fails and comes loose. At least the strap is not dragging on the ground and it's always still making connection over here. Yes, not being rubber coated, 
it's going to probably end up you know going through the powder coating and making this area rust but i'll keep an eye on it and touch it up i did option for the wire mesh this way if i want to put a box up here to you know for travel if i don't have a second kayak with me you know like a storage box to take gear with me etc i'll have that option with the wire mesh you can see even on these up here how many supports and tie down location he gives you got one two three four five six seven eight you got eight tie downs just on this upright platform area to tie down anything you want whether it's a kayak gear dry bags whatever you got want you can put up here there's enough tie down locations to tie down your gear you can also add ratchet straps on top of this as well. I didn't option for that. So like before what I was saying that he actually made provisions for the Yakima box and for the wiring itself, I could always drill a hole through this and get into the wiring compartment, which I could pop this cover off, make a splice, and I'll actually have my lights up here if I wanna put lights inside this box. But I have lights on my truck, so I'm not really concerned about that. That's why I didn't have them do that. But as far as the provisions for the stainless steel hardware, I use that as well. But the Yakima box also comes with these flap plates that you know wrap around your ladder rack or whatever. I also use those as well. And these come with thumb screws. What I did is I actually took out the brass inserts that was in the thumb screws and removed them and just used those to tighten this bracket down. The reason why I used the bracket from Yakima is because it's a flat plate and it kind of compresses this box so it's a little bit more tighter against the metal and also gives me another, you know, uh, attachment point just besides, you know, going through the plastic box. You know, this thing's plastic so it's going to move and contract and all that stuff in the sun. So I wanted as much, you know, contact point to the trailer as possible. So I also use this, but I removed the thumb screws because they're pretty large and they take up some room because in here I'm going to actually keep my paddles and my, you know, my Yak Attack uh, boom stick that I have my camera on and any other gear I can fit down here. So I'm actually going to keep in here. So I didn't want those thumb screws in the way and take up all that room. One thing I could say about the Yakima box, this is the first time I've used one. They come with a rubber seal that you cut the link to fill in like the, uh, there's like a little slot in here. So in case wherever you have to attach this, you can and move these flat plates around. They're crappy. They didn't hold out, hold out well. I put them in, but I also took black Gorilla tape and also put that on top too to keep some more of the water out and also dust. I'm not looking for a completely waterproof, dustproof box, but these, I will say these seals that come with Yakima, is kind of crappy so i like i said i used the seal but i also took black gorilla tape and put it down because they were just popping out anyway just a little tip that i learned from there maybe the seals are better now but you know this yakima box holds eight rods and reels when you crisscross them and they can be fully rigged you know they give you three attachment points i'll see how this holds out i'm going to do a long-term review on this and the trailer all together you know i'll, I'll keep Keep an eye on the trailer. If I see any flaws with it, I'll let Denny know and he'll do any adjustments which, if he needs to to his future trailers, but I think he's got it down pat at this point. But you know, I'm gonna keep a long-term review of the box, the trailer, and the rod tube, rod tube I did myself. You know, this is a steel trailer, so it's built to last. It's gonna last you a lifetime, so to me, it's worth the money. You know, mechanical parts like this, yes, over time, it's gonna wear out and fail, but you can change it. That's why he did the bolts. This stuff doesn't last forever, either does the ratchet straps, but the trailer itself, the frame, you know, the axle, the, the tires, you're gonna get such longevity out of it, I think it's worth the money. Like I was saying before, you got the two switches here. One does the undercarriage lights, which I'm going to show you at night. And the other switch does these rigging lights that you see right here. I have two of them, one up front, one right here. And it's going to light up this kayak as I rig this early in the morning, plus the lights on my uh, truck. When you back down, you have your reverse light to be able to see into the water and down the ramp. Make sure you don't hit anybody. You can see the two rigging lights give it plenty of light to set yourself up as you're going out on the water in the morning. So the red underglow, you can see lights up nice and bright, but it's not too bright or blinding to other traffic, but it gives you that pimped out look. So if you're going to go for it, you might as well do it. You can do, uh, I think, white, green, blue, red. I don't know if he has any other colors, but I mean, the red just kind of goes good with everything, in my opinion, especially with the black trailer. And these are controlled by these two switches right here. Top is rigging, bottom is undercarriage. So if you're going through a state where the cops are a little bit of a pain and they say, oh, you can't have those lights on, you could just say, sorry, officer, I didn't know that. And just come back here, hit that switch and turn them off and still be, I guess you could say legal in some states, because I think some states you are not supposed to have these, but we'll play by ear. As you can see, when you put the truck in reverse, it automatically turns on the reverse light, which is going to give you light you know, as you come down the ramp. And it's definitely a bright light.
So it's a pretty cool, badass setup in my opinion. So, you know, I may, may, may not be the best fisherman, but at least I look cool doing it. You know, another thing that drove me to on the water is that right there. It's veteran built. It's a veteran owned business. And to us, that's a big plus. We love supporting our veterans and our first responders and all that as well. That's why we started our charity. But the main reason for getting this trailer is to be able to take other kayakers with me. And also in the future, you know, probably my son as well. But that was the main reason for getting this trailer to be able to take multiple kayaks and take out our, you know, take out our heroes, take out our veterans. There's so many options you can do with on the water trailers to be in your budget. So, you know, don't think that this is out of your price range. Just go on his website and you can build this at a reasonable price and it's worth the money. You will not regret it whatsoever. I've been around these trailers now for about two, three years. I've seen them by other people and everybody raves about them. So I said, you know, it's, it's time for me to do it. And like I said, I have, a, I have a size restraint with my garage, so I couldn't keep using my utility trailer. That's why I started going to the on the roof of my truck. Yeah, with me wanting to take out other people, I had to go back to the trailer. So I said, well, if I have a restraint, there's no reason to get a John Boat trailer. By the time I buy a John Boat trailer and modify, it's gonna probably look like crap anyway. So I figured let's just spend the money and it's the last trailer I ever need to buy. If you guys have any questions about the trailer, you know, just reach out to me. Denny's very busy. He will get back to you as well. But if you guys want to know, we need to answer. I'm pretty good at responding to the questions on uh, YouTube. Just reach out to me. I can let you know quite a bit as well about the trailers from On The Water. So just reach out to me at rjmfishtails at icloud.com or you can hit me up on any of my social media platforms. I hope you guys like this walkthrough of the on the water trailer. You know, there's there's videos out there of them, but not that many. So I wanna be able to do a walkthrough myself to show you guys, and you can go on the website and see a whole bunch of pictures and go build one for yourself. You will not regret buying one of these trailers. It's worth saving up the money if you don't have the money to go buy one, to be able to save up and get one so you have it for life. So as always guys, be safe on the water. I'll catch you guys in the water. Thanks for watching.